did nothing during this time. They planned. The first document I want to talk about is the one that we alluded to at the very end of the last presentation. The American Youth Commission's What the Schools Ought to Teach. From that publication, even where particular courses and certain parts of other courses are entirely defensible, the complete curriculum must be described as inappropriate because of its emphasis on items that do not accord with the ability or the outlook on the future of the majority of pupils. What the schools ought to teach talked of general education and special education. Uh, special education is not what we mean today. General education was that which everyone took. And special education was that which was beyond general. It also talked of the need for an ongoing work experience for all. Let me quote. There is no factor of general education which is more important to consider than work. This statement should not be thought of as applying merely to a few marginal cases, but should be accepted as a principle of the widest possible application. And it continued. Those who are to enter the professions need to labor at some period in their lives in order to gain an understanding and appreciation of what labor is. Those who are going to earn their living by labor have a right to be trained under competent supervision so that they may enter on their careers under the most favorable conditions possible. Now all that was written and published prior to the United States involvement in World War II. We didn't mention war at all. We simply talked about general education, special education, work experience. After Pearl Harbor, the schools become directly involved in the war effort. And if you look at high school yearbooks, uh, from that particular time, uh, they all have a war flavor to them. The teaching profession in the United States understands clearly that the nation is engaged in a desperate struggle for its very survival. That the possibility of a worthwhile life for us and for all mankind depends upon the outcome that education is bound to be affected by the conflict, that the educational institutions carry heavy war responsibilities, and that the teacher, like every other citizen, must go all out for victory. That's pretty heavy stuff to digest. We, we've not in any of our lofty pronouncements today, or, or, or even since that time, see anything so grim as those words. This, this was serious business. We were in a big war and a lot of kids are going to be involved. What the schools should teach in wartime was published uh, by the Educational Policy Committee in 1943. We just read a little bit from that. It identified two groups of students, those who would be involved in the war and those who presumably would not. It directed the secondary schools to the war effort. It instituted those pre-induction training classes for the kids that wanted them. It gave a war orientation that I alluded to a moment earlier uh, in general to the schools with some trickle down uh, to the elementary schools. Then it said, really, P 
pithy phrases such as, we are now concerned with developing with developing their fitness for service in the war industries and for fighting survival in battle. The tyranny of time squeezes out everything that is less than essential. Long range values for them, talking about the kids in high school, must be subordinated to the life and death needs of today and tomorrow. That's heavy stuff. Now, as the war is winding, not, not really winding down yet, but you can see a perhaps glimmer, uh, folks start thinking about, well, what are we going to do if and when the war is over? 